I'm trying to get close up so you can see how amazing the texture is of this amazing hat. You guys, I'm really excited to show you how to make this moss stitch hat today. Um, I think I made this in about an hour. It's so great to make for hats for, it's so great to make for gifts for the holidays. Um, you can make them in a bunch of different colors, but it's super simple, pretty straightforward. It fits great. I love the extra large yarn pom-pom on the top. You can put any kind of pom-pom on if you want. If you wanted to do like a faux fur one, if you wanted to make a smaller one, here's what you will need to knit this. You'll need one skein of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick Yarn. This is the color Thaw. You can use any other super bulky weight yarn. My gauge was nine stitches per four inches wide here. It's so just to give you an idea. You will need a US 15, size 15, 10 millimeter, 16 inch circular knitting needle. We knit this in the round. You will need a tapestry needle. You will need a one stitch marker, sharp pair of scissors, tape measure, extra large clover yarn pom-pom maker, and I think that's everything, all right? All the supplies are linked in the video description, so if you have any questions on that, you can check out the video description. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna have a PDF of the pattern available. If I do, that'll be linked below. If not, just follow along in the video to figure out how to make the pattern, and be sure to stick around to the end. I show you how to make this in any gauge, so if you wanted to make this in worsted weight yarn on five millimeter needles, I show you how to convert the pattern to knit this on any gauge. I also have head measurements, like standardized head measurements linked in the video description as well. So if you wanted to make this for a baby or toddler, you can figure out how many, how big a circumference you should make. So there you go, let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna cast on 40 stitches using the long tail cast on method. I wrap my yarn around my needle about 10 times to figure out how much length I'll need for about 10 stitches for the long tail cast on. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and then at the end is where I make my slip knot, and now I know I have enough yarn to cast on 40 stitches. So then you'll just make your slip knot, and now we will start the long tail cast on by placing that slip knot on our needle making sure our tail is in front, and I'm going to grab the yarn like this, holding it in my other fingers down below, and I'm going to turn and go under the yarn around my, my thumb and over the yarn around my index finger and pull that through. So now I have two stitches cast on. three, four, five, six, seven. So we're casting on 40 stitch stitches, but we need to cast on 41 to join in the round. So I'll see you back here once I have 41 stitches cast on my needle. All right. 41 stitches cast on, and now it's time to join our work in the round. And to join the work in the round, you need to first make sure that your stitches aren't twisted. I like to place my work flat to make sure everything's facing the right direction. It's a little bit easier to make sure the stitches aren't twisted when your work is smaller like this for a hat, but when you're dealing with something longer like a sweater, um, it can be a little bit more difficult. So basically you're going to want to kind of push the stitches to the edge here because we need to join our work and we have one extra stitch cast on because we're going to end up dropping that stitch when we join our work. So we have our, our needles held like this and what we're going to do is take one stitch, the last stitch from the left hand needle and move it over to the right hand needle. So I'm going to grab it with my right hand needle and move it over here to my right hand needle. Then I'm going to take this first stitch that was here on the right hand needle and move it over that stitch we just slip, switched over and we're gonna end up dropping this stitch. But first, let's lift it over, okay? And then we're just going to drop it. And then you can pull the yarn like this. And now we've joined our work in the round and we're gonna place our stitch marker on our needles now 
so we know the beginning and the end of the round. So now we've joined our work and now we can start knitting our one by one rib. So one by one rib is simply knit one, move the yarn in front and purl one. Knit one, purl one. Okay, so we're going to continue knitting one and purling one all the way around to the beginning. Okay, I'm about to finish up my first round of ribbing. We have an even number of stitches that we cast on, 40 stitches. So we should end with a purl stitch right before that beginning of round marker. And then now we've completed our first round. So to continue on, you just simply slip the marker and you continue knitting one, purling one. We're knitting the knit stitches and purling the purl stitches. And now you can see that ribbing start to come together. So we're gonna continue this one by one rib for a total of eight rounds. So I'm on my second round so I'm going to complete six more rounds after this one. So I will meet you back here at the end of my eighth round of my one by one rib. All right, I'm finishing up my eighth round here and I'll show you what we're going to do. So you can check your rounds by counting the stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I finished eight. I'm on my last stitch here and I'm going to slip my marker. And now we're gonna start the double moss, uh, or we're gonna, now we're gonna start the moss stitch. And we did one by one rib already for the brim. And moss stitch is a series of ribbing um, and you just kind of shift every two rows where the ribbing is. Um, we are going to actually start purling because um, our last stitch on our ribbing was a knit here. So we're going to actually start ribbing one by one, but we're going to start with a purl. So we're going to purl one stitch, knit one stitch, purl one, knit one. So we're shifting our ribbing here so that it does not line up with the one by one rib on the brim. So continue purling one, knitting one, purling one, knitting one now. And you can see that our stitch is off here, which is the way it's supposed to be so that the stitch pattern starts showing up. So continue purling one, knitting one all the way to the beginning of the round. And then I'll tell you what to do on the next round. Okay, when you're nearing the end of the round, you should end on a knit stitch because we started with a purl stitch. So you slip the marker and now for round two, we repeat round one. So we're going to purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. So round one and two are the same. And you can just see we're going opposite of the hat ribbing. So continue round two, purl one, knit one, all the way to the end. And I'll see you back here to show you round three. I'm finishing a round two. I'm gonna end on a knit one. Now I'm going to slip the marker and start round three which is a knit one, purl one. So we started with a purl for the last two rounds. Now we're gonna start with a knit one. So we're just shifting where the ribbing is. So it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all of the way around. So I'll see you back here at the end of our round three. I'm finishing around three here. I should end on a purl because I started with a knit. I'm gonna slip the stitch marker and now for our final round, round four, this is a four row repeat. So once we knit rounds one through four, we're gonna start over with round one again. So, but for round four, we're going to do a knit one, purl one. 
So you just knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way across. So now you can see the four rows here. We have two purl stitches, two knit stitches, and then we just go back and we'll do a purl. So it's purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one for rounds one and two, and then knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one for rounds three and four. So all we're doing is shifting the ribbing every two rounds. So you get this great texture, but it's a very simple stitch with just knit and purls. So I will show you what everything's looking like after round four. Okay, so I'm finishing up around four, I'm ending on a purl. I slip my stitch marker and now I start with a round one again, which is purl one, knit one. Purl one, knit one. Okay, so you repeat rounds one through four until you hit about eight and a half inches and you can end on a round two or after a round four. So just depends on where you are and the length that your hat is and how long you want the hat to be. So I'll see you back here after I've knit um, until my hat measures a total of eight and a half inches and you measure that from the bottom of the brim to the top. So I'm almost at four inches. So I need to knit until my work is about eight and a half inches. All right, so I'll see you back here once I've knit this to the length that I would like to knit it or till about eight and a half inches. And one thing I wanted to show you guys is if you lose track of what round you're on, you can simply just look at what you previously knit to figure out what you should be knitting. So I'm at the beginning of this next round and then I can see I had two knit stitches previously. So it's time to purl again. So it's time for me to start around one, purl one, knit one. Okay, so and if I had two purl stitches here, you could see you could tell that it's time to knit again. So you can just look previously and see um, what you did on the previous round to figure out what you should be, what round you should be starting with. All right, I'm finishing up a round here and this is um, after a round two. So you're gonna wanna work, like I said, until you've completed a round two or a round four because you just wanna have two stitches worked, um, one right after the other before we reduce for the crown. So I am just gonna measure where I am now. I think I'm to the point where I need to be to reduce for the crown. Yes, yeah, so I'm rated right at eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna stop here and reduce. So in order to reduce for the crown, this gets a little bit tricky on the 16 inch needles, but bear with me, you can do it. Um, you are going to slip the marker and now we're simply going to just knit two together all of the way around. So to knit two together, you just insert the needle into two stitches as if you were to knit, and you knit those stitches together and pull them off. Knit two together. Knit two together. So you're just going to continue this all the way around and then I'll show you what to do. It does start to get a little tight, but that's okay. Just keep working those knit two togethers all the way around. All right, I'm almost finished with the knit two together. So we've gone from 40 stitches to 20 stitches after this. Okay, and then when you're done, you can see so the stitches are pretty spaced out, but that's okay. So you can remove the stitch marker now. Now you're gonna wanna take your scissors and cut a tail about eight inches or so. 
And then you're going to weave the yarn through your tapestry needle. And now we're going to close up the brim. So I threaded my needle and now we're simply going to move these stitches onto this needle. So just lift them off and we're simply going to take all of these stitches and put them on. the tapestry needle and you can start to pull this side because all of these stitches are coming off. So we're taking the tail and weaving the tail in all of these stitches because this is how we will close up the top of the hat. Okay, so this, this is what it looks like. Now it's time to just pull the yarn all the way through and seam up the hat. Okay, and you can take your yarn with your tapestry needle and push this back through the top. And then once we're done with our pom-pom, we can tighten everything up and knot it together. So you can just pull it through Take off your tapestry needle. And now we can make our pom-pom. I wanted to show you how to weave in this end. And I usually just take my tapestry needle with the tail and just weave it through the inside of the work. Let's try this again. And you can just do this all the way up the brim and pull it through. Then you can just snip the yarn and now we'll do our pom-pom. Okay, to make a yarn pom, grab your pom-pom maker. This is the Clover Extra Large pom-pom maker. You are gonna open up one side together if there's two that open separately, but you're gonna wanna treat them as one as we wrap the yarn together. We're gonna be cutting in between here. So you're gonna wanna treat this as one first. So basically all you do is take your yarn, and I start at this end, and you're gonna wanna end at the end where it closes up, because we're gonna continue along. So our yarn needs to end over here so we can continue this way. So. Again, treat this as one, and then you just simply wrap the yarn around these, these sections. And I like to make mine pretty thick. I'm gonna turn, um, there we go. All right, so yeah, just start working and wrapping. And again, I like my yarn pom-poms pretty thick, so I wrap the yarn around pretty thick. So the more yarn you wrap, the fuller the yarn pom-pom. So. Don't be stingy if you want your palm to be really full. So just continue doing this all the way around until you get to the end. Okay, I've got lots of yarn around this side. Now I'm going to close this. And now I'm gonna open up the other side and we are going to continue this wrapping, I like to just kind of push my yarn in between there and continue wrapping the yarn around the same way, starting at this side and end, and end up over here. All right, so when you're done wrapping that second portion, you are going to pull this shut, hear it click, and now, you take your pair of sharp scissors and make sure this is secure and you start cutting all around. Once you've cut to the end, all the way around, you're gonna wanna cut a piece of yarn, I don't know, probably about 12 inches or so. And you then 
see how there's a space in the center? We're gonna tie a knot. You're gonna put this yarn all the way through here so it fits in the center of the yarn palm. And you're gonna tie a knot really, really tight all the way through. And just keep, I do this about three times, making sure it's really tight and secure. And then you can remove the pom-pom maker and separate everything. And now you've got your gigantic, extra large, cute yarn palm and you can take your scissors now and trim any excess pieces and just shape it up nicely. And then you can take your hat and I just take the two strings and pull them through on either side here. And just pull them through the top of the hat. And then you can turn the hat kind of inside out here and grab all of the strings and tie a knot. Or some people tie a bow if you want to re be able to remove the the yarn palm, I'm just going to tie a knot and keeping it simple and then you can just snip the ends and again you can keep shaping the yarn palm if you would like, fluff it up a little bit, but now you've got this cute hat. So inevitably what happens is I make a pattern like this and then I get flooded with questions on how to change the gauge. Like I don't want to knit this on 10 millimeter needles. I want to knit it with worsted weight yarn on five millimeter needles. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to convert this pattern. So basically the circumference of the hat is 18 inches and you can do the same thing. This is just ratios. You can do the same thing with centimeters. I'm just going to show you with inches. Okay. So 18 inches, the hat circumference is 18 inches. And our old gauge was nine stitches to four inches. That was our old gauge. Let's say your new gauge is 20 stitches to four inches. So that's probably closer to what it would be like if you were knitting it with worsted weight yarn on five millimeter needles. Let's say your new gauge is 20 stitches per four inches, okay? So we need to figure out how many stitches to cast on with this new gauge for 18 inches. So it is a ratio. So we take our new gauge, 20 stitches per four inches equals X, we don't know how many new stitches to cast on, over 18 inches. So this will help us figure out how many stitches we need to cast on. Okay, so we solve for X, and you solve for X by multiplying 20 by 18 divided by four. So I will show you what that is. 20 times 18 divided by four is 90 stitches. X equals 90 stitches, and you're gonna wanna make sure you cast on stitches in an even number. So if this turned out to be 89, you should either round down to 88 or round up to 90. So if you are knitting this and your gauge in moss stitch is 20 stitches per four inches, you're gonna wanna cast on 90 stitches to get the same hat circumference with uh, a smaller gauge, okay? So that is how you figure out how to change the gauge. Okay, and if you're trying to make this a smaller size, you can use the same thing and adjust the circumference. You can take, if you're knitting this for a child, you can take a hat that fits your child, measure the circumference and just change the circumference. Okay, um, you will need to change the length of the hat as well. I will, in the comments of the, in the video description, I will link um, 
where you can find standardized measurements for adults and children if you are looking to convert this to a kid size. But that's how you change the gauge and figure out your cast on stitches. Um, again, you could go up or down. Um, your gauge might be eight stitches per four inches, six stitches per four inches if you're making this in like a really crazy, super bulky weight yarn. But that's how you change the gauge. All right, hope that helps and happy knitting guys.